Okay. What's the first thing that you notice about this rhythm? Anybody? Take a look at this. The heart rate is fast. Okay, yes. Noor, correct. The heart rate is fast. It's very fast. Very fast. How fast? Well, well look at, take a look at this. Let's take a look. If we want to count the heart rate, look at this. That's This is one box. This is five. This is one. One box into 300 is 300. So let's do this. How, and five, five, six. This would be six little boxes. Six into fifteen hundred is what? Six into fifteen hundred. What is it? Two fifty. Two fifty. Does the heart look like its hat can rest at all? The heart can't rest. Uh, Valerie. I wish Valerie were, Valerie were here because she said something earlier about when the heart can't rest. The heart can't rest. What happens to the heart when it can't rest and it goes too fast? Gets too tired, doesn't it? This is a prelude to a very dangerous rhythm if we don't correct this with medication. Okay? This can turn into ventricular tachycardia, which can turn into ventricular fibrillation, which can turn into asystole, which is flatline. Flatline. Okay, so let's take a look at, uh, let's take a look. You said, what was it, 250? Yeah. Noor, did you say that's what yeah. the heart rate was, 250? 1500 divided by 6 is 250. Okay, when we get above 150 beats per minute, then we're getting into uh, uh, supraventricular tachycardia. Okay, this is a dangerous level. If the heart can't rest, the coronary arteries can't do what? They can't fill up with oxygen, right? There's not enough time. So the coronary arteries are going to become starved for oxygen. This is not just a rhythm that you're going to look at and say, oh my God. You know, he's 250. I need to, obviously, you're going to call the doctor or the nurse. You're going to notify them. But more importantly, this rhythm will lead to death in a very short amount of time. So you can see if you're working in this field and you see this, how imperative it is that you get right on the phone and get somebody in the room, right? To take care of that patient. Because this may be a prelude to also a heart attack okay can we measure can we measure pqrs well qrs we can measure qrs is 0 0.04 it's very small it's one box qrs can you see we can't do qt we can't do pr we can't right that's unmeasurable. So if you see a rhythm like this, what you're going to say is you're going to say it's unmeasurable. Okay? Now, you can't you can't measure it. You you would say you would say you would say PR not measurable. You would say QT not measurable. Okay, but you would measure the heart rate and you would measure the QRS. Now, if you take a look at this rhythm, look at what this says. Super, supra, ventricular tachycardia. 150 to 250 beats per minute. We need to take this down with some amiodarone. You don't need to know that. But as a healthcare provider, we have to be aware that when we see this kind of beat, this isn't going to last long because the heart can't last long at this rate. It's too much stress. It's f the, what's firing right now is going to cause the heart to crash. No, this is supraventricular tachycardia. 
It's not it we haven't got it. We don't even have time to get into heart blocks today. Maybe with our EKG class. I'm not sure, but we'll take a look, okay? So this is on the website. This is right from your um, this is right from your your classroom online. These are right from your modules. So you can see this is going to take you some time, right? Now, look what happens after this particular rhythm. Okay, this is all over the place. Let's take a look at this. We talked about a STEMI, not a STEMI, we talked about a ST elevation. What is ST? The S and the T. We know where the S and T is, right? Yeah. We know what the S and T should look like. When the S and the T are out of sync, or we have a drop, or we have an elevation, we have a problem, a big problem. And you have to be aware of that as a telemetry technician. <clears throat> There's a lot more than PVCs um, associated with this particular rhythm. This is premature ventricular complexes. They make it look pretty simple, but there's a lot more going on here. This is a mess, first of all, right? But we just can't write. This is a mess. Can we even get a heart rate out of this? The R to R's, are they regular? No. P to P's? Absolutely not. We have, we have a QRS, and the QRS's look a little bit abnormal um, in the sense that the P waves, um, well, no, the P waves don't look too bad. We can measure the QRS. We can measure the PR. So let's, let's see what we can do. These guys right here, this right here, this is not normal. This is what we call a premature ventricular contraction. This T or a QRS? No, this is neither. This is what we call a premature ventricular contraction. You don't measure these. You, you, these can look, these can look different um, in, in different people. Uh, typically, sometimes they don't necessarily have to be peaks. These, uh, how can I say this? Okay, let's count them. How many do we have? One, two, right? And then we have something really weird going on here. This, this isn't even normal. Look at this T wave. This is where you look at the ST segment changes. Q, R, S. This T wave should be where? Up here, right? Shouldn't it be up here? But it's not, is it? It's below what the horizontal line. So what we have is an ST, not an elevation, but an ST depression. So there's a problem. So not, not only do we have premature ventricular complexes, but we also have um, an ST depression. Look at this. Where T is trying to come up, and then we get this almost this right angle here, very abnormal. It's like it's trying to come up. Now, this would be the T wave. I'm sorry. This would be the, if we were to lift this up and come up here, then this would be the isoelectric line. This would be the T wave. So this is all out of whack. This is on a completely wrong angle. You have to be able to see that. Okay. Do what? No. No, they're all depressed. The ST is depressed. The ST is depressed. The ST is depressed. The ST is depressed. So what we have is premature ventricular contractions with ST depression. What's the heart rate? Well, let's take a couple heart rates that we can see that look to be within the normal range. Here's two. Let's see, we got 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 19 into 1500 is what? Noor, have you got? What is it? 78. So it's 78 here, 
78 here, 78 here. Let's measure the QRS. Q. Here's our QRS. So it's about zero point zero point I'd say one two. So it's normal. You do. You count as much as you can. You count the heart rate, right? So, like this one is the, four, the second one. We can't count anything on it. This you have to recognize as something called a PVC, a premature ventricular contraction. Okay, that's what this is. It's like you have a heart rate, but you notice that the, the ST is depressed. It goes down. But then you have this, right, then you have this odd formation here, which is called a premature ventricular contraction. Now with PVCs, typically if they're, um, if they follow a pattern, like for instance, if this is like normal, normal, well they're not really normal, but then PVC, this is called a trigemini. But for it to be trigemini, this would also have to show normal, normal PVC. So it's not. So we have one here, we have one here. So they're multifocal PVCs. They don't really follow a pattern. The PVCs don't follow any kind of particular pattern. But yes, we can measure the QRS. We can measure the, the heart rate. We measured the heart rate between the areas that we could measure. This one, this one, and this one. No, it's not because you have a PVC. But you have to you have to count in in <clears throat> if the PVC wasn't there, you have to be able to count the heart rate. Like between here and here, here and here and here and here is normal. But you can't this heart rate would be bradycardic. But because we have a, a PVC here, we're gonna initiate this whole rhythm as abnormal, but the underlying heart rate is 78 in absence of the PVCs. Does that make sense? The underlying heart rate is 78. I mean, you could count this. You could say when the heart rate returns to normal at 78, when the heart rate throws a PVC, it's what? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 36, 37, 38. 38 into 1500 is what? 38 to 1500? 39. 39. So it's bradic, bradycardic. Okay, so you have intermittent PVCs with salvos of bradycardia of 39 and a normal heart rate of 78 without PVCs. You have to indicate as much information as possible. So if we take a look at the PR, which we can measure, P, R, P, 
PR is what? 0 0.12 to 0 0.20, so it's about uh, it's no, about 0 0.16. Yes, do you do heart two heart rates. Yes, you do. You do have absolutely have two heart rates. So how can I mention it if you were testing me? How can I say it? You would just say it. The heart two rate heart. where it is normal, where the heart rate is is regular, it's 78. Where the heart rate is irregular, it's 39. Bradycardic. The, Q, the PR is normal. Can we measure a Q? We can measure a QT. Q. T. So, 2 can I try the 300 just on R, so I can count 1 R, 2, 3, 4, 5, You can't. No, 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 no. No, you can't do that. But still, the, the same result. I'm going to give you 50, that's been pretty card. Yeah, but 50 is a lot different than 38. If you count the heart rate between yeah, these I two peaks, the you get 38. No, no. I, I mean, if I divide the 300, I mean, uh, one R, two R, R, You can't four, do it like five, that. Six. No, no, you can't do it like that no. because they're not even. The it's not even. The R's are not even. Yeah, because it's not. So you have to look at the end of, you have to look and inspect the individual differences. So this is the same, this is the same, this is the same. What's the heart rate between here? 78. Yeah. This is a PVC. What's the heart rate between the PVC peaks? 30, 30, 38, 39. So you would say heart rate is normal, where the R to R's are regular. Heart rate is abnormal or bradycardic during the PVCs. You, that's the only way you can do it. You cannot estimate. That's going to get you into a lot of trouble if you just throw a number out there to guesstimate. You can't. It takes time to measure these. You have to be meticulous. Now let's go ahead and measure the, um, this was the PR, right? Okay, so 5, 2.0, 4, 4, and 4, and 12, about 0 0.32. It's a little bit less than a normal QT. So the QT is a little bit less, and that's okay. We have to know that we have to indicate that as such. Um, so when we're talking about ST segment changes, we're looking at the S and the T. This is way below the isoelectric line. The isoelectric line is the line that kind of intersects the entire rhythm. You look at the ST segment to find the isoelectric line because the T usually comes above and drops down to, to the bottom of the line. That's where the line is. Okay, this is a difficult rhythm. This is a hard one. This is a mess. It's dangerous. All right, let's take a look at another one. Okay, textbook. This is textbook. This is called ventricular tachycardia. You can't measure a QRS. You can't measure a QT. You can't measure a PR. Technically, the heart rate would just be between the peaks, which is uh, roughly around 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, about 300. No, 10 into 150 is 1,500. Uh, 150. This rhythm, people cannot breathe when they're in ventricular tachycardia. The heart's not resting. There's really no particular polarization. The electricity is not being distributed through the nodes as it should be. And with that being said, this has we need an immediate intervention. Or this well, rhythm I'm not going to be for long. Exactly. This rhythm will degrade into ventricular uh, this is ventricular tachycardia. This will vent, this will degrade into ventricular fibrillation and then asystole. So if you take a look at this Typically, these rhythms will go from here. This is the same thing, by the way. Ventricular tachycardia. 
Okay, very dangerous. They can't survive this. That's it, VTAC. That's all you can write, VTAC. V as in Victor, TAC, T-A-C-K, VTAC. Ventricular tachycardia. If you see this rhythm, this is basically a textbook rhythm. You have to be able to recognize ventricular tachycardia. Okay, let's take a look. Now, this one looks like VTAC, but notice the axis is flipped. It's flipped around the axis, right? This is called torsades. It's VTAC with a, a flip about the axis, a rotation of the axis. So it's called torsades. Torsades. I'll show you the spelling here, right here. Right here, torsade de point. T-O-R-S-A-D-E-S-D-E-P-O-I-N-T-E-S. This is not so much torsades in textbook rhythm as this one. This is textbook. This is where you see it kind of loop around the axis. Okay, this is torsades. Now let me show you what this rhythm, ventricular tachycardia or torsades, degrades into. This is ventricular fibrillation. Both the top and the bottom rhythms here are called V fib. Now, so somebody can, can have questions like that? No, they can't. They're, they're on the ground. They're not breathing. You're not going to be able to feel a carotid pulse. You're going to have to do CPR. This is where you put the pads on their chest and let the uh, machine recognize the rhythm. We shock people with this rhythm. This is where we shock people because we have to shock them because they can stay in this rhythm for up to six minutes. And six minutes with oxygen will be brain death, right? We can uh, give the CPR, right? You have to, but you know it doesn't work, but you have to do it anyway. But you have to get someone to get an AED so you can put the pads on their chest so it can recognize the rhythm because we're gonna, it's going to shock this rhythm. And when it shocks it, it stops the heart. You see, shocking the heart doesn't start it. Shocking the heart stops it. We want to stop the heart so we can beat it. So this will work. Yeah, a lot of people think, oh, we're going to shock the heart, he's going to come back to life. No, he's going to die. Heart stops. We have to stop the heart because if we don't stop the heart, they're going to be without oxygen for six minutes in this rhythm, and all the CPR in the world isn't going to help them. So when we have this rhythm, we have to shock them. So what happens? This happens. When, when we shock, we got that line, right? Yes. And after we have to start the CPR. Yes. But when you shock them, the only time you stop CPR is when they tell everyone, hands move away, clear, shock. And then as soon as the shock is delivered, we get back on the chest. Because this is the rhythm that we can work with. There's no electrical activity, but at least we can keep, we can get the heart working manually. A the thump, yeah. cardiac thump, yeah. But that doesn't always work. If in the absence of an AED, yeah, I'd probably do that. But you can't guarantee that either. However, uh, we want asystole. This is what this rhythm is called. This rhythm is called asystole, guys. Ventricular asystole. So when we shock the heart, we sh the heart gets shocked when it's in this rhythm because this rhythm doesn't support life. And then we go to this rhythm after we shock them. And after this rhythm, we're gonna do CPR, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stop here for today.
Uh, I know I've 